Hey, I'm Richie Castellano. Welcome back to my studio. Today's video is about my guitars. And this is a video you guys asked me to make in the comments of a few other videos. Uh, you wanted me to go over my guitar collection. Now, I'm not really a guitar collector. I just uh, ended up with a bunch of guitars through years of playing. And today I'll go through them. I'll talk about when I got them, how I got them, why I got them. I'll play some samples on them so you can hear them and tell some stories. Uh, but before we get started, I want to give a big thank you to my cousin Phil, who's behind the camera today. Uh, Phil has a really nice film camera and he knows what he's doing, unlike me. So if you notice that today's video looks better than my normal videos, that's why. So thank you, Phil. So let's do this in chronological order. And today we're only gonna do electric guitars. I don't have too many acoustics and I have a few basses. If you wanna see a bass guitar video, leave a comment below and I'll do that next time. But today we're gonna do chronological order of electronic, electronical guitars. All right, so we're gonna start with this one. Now this is actually my oldest, not my oldest guitar, but the first one I got. And it wasn't my actual first guitar because I traded it. Now. I got my first guitar, which was a black Fender Squire Telly. I got that from my grandparents' store in Brooklyn, Bath Music. They had a legendary music store there. And uh, my grandfather sold me, not gave me, sold me this uh, Squire Telly that weighed like a thousand pounds. So uh, I was like nine years old at the time and it was too heavy for me. So I went back to him, I said, Pop, you got anything smaller? Uh, but I still kind of like the Telly feel. So he, he traded me that for this. Now what's cool about this is it's an 80s Squire Bullet by Fender. Uh, now you might think, oh Squire, it's kind of like, you know, the low quality line, but this is a Squire made in Japan. And I recently took this out and restrung it and it's unbelievable. This is an amazing student guitar. It plays great, feels great. I did some modifications and that's gonna be one of the themes you notice today. I do a lot of modifications on a lot of my guitars. And this is one of the first things I ever modded. I believe this is a DiMarzio Fast Track and this is a recent edition. I think this is a Satch Track. But this is one I put in as soon as I got it and this is one I put in recently because the neck pickup was dead. So let's play it. <laughs> You'll notice a little theme here because the last guitar, the Bullet, is sort of like a small student sized guitar. Well, this next guitar is a Rickenbacker 325 V59. It's a three quarter scale guitar. This was my first good guitar and I'd been playing for four years when I got it. I was 12. I saw the movie Help and uh, John Lennon was playing one of these. He was playing the black and white one and I just thought that was the coolest looking guitar I'd ever seen. So I started saving money for it and I had a piggy bank that said Rickenbacker Savings Fund on it and I really wanted this guitar. I hadn't even played one before. I just knew I wanted it because it looked small and I was a small kid. So um, height wise, I think I was rather round but but short. But um, anyway, so this is was my dream guitar and my dad gave this to me for Christmas and this was like the biggest Christmas present I've ever gotten. So. Uh, what happened is my dad got it and decided to hide it in the basement of our house and mix it in with all the other guitars so I wouldn't notice. But I noticed it and I was playing it for months before he gave it to me for Christmas. But still, thank you dad for the wonderful Christmas uh, present. Uh, just like the last guitar, this one also came from Bath Music. Now, um, this guitar sounds great if you're gonna play the song, I Saw Her Standing There. For anything else, it's not great. But anyway, let's, let's hear a little bit of that. <laughs> Or you can do like, you know, it's got that. I would use the Bigsby, but it'll go out of tune immediately. So we'll just look at the Bigsby and say, ooh. Anyway. It's 1996, I think, and I have two guitars. I have the Squire Bullet and I have the Rickenbacker. Now, 
what happens is you go through puberty and then all of a sudden you get taller. So I was having trouble playing on the, uh, on the Rickenbacker and my fingers were, were, I wasn't able to play like leads. I was starting to get interested in playing leads. So I was borrowing a Les Paul from my dad. He had a 60 classic Les Paul, beautiful guitar, sounded awesome. I uh, had nice humbucking pickups in it. Uh, it was just a fast guitar. It was great for lead guitar. I was getting into Eric Clapton and the Blues Breakers. So that was like, you know, you want like a 60 Les Paul to play the Blues Breakers. So it was the perfect guitar for me to have. And uh, one day I came home to play my guitar, my dad's guitar, but it sort of had become my guitar and it was gone. And my dad, I said, dad, where's the Les Paul? He goes, oh yeah, I sold it. I'm like, how could you do that? He goes, it's my guitar. It's not your guitar. So he goes, you got to get your own guitar. I was like, oh, crap. So I picked up the, you know, Squire Bullet. I went to band practice that day. And the other guitar player in my band had bought the guitar from my dad. So he was playing my f guitar that was mine. My dad sold it to him. My father said, you got to get your own guitar. And, and I hadn't, like, thought about that. Because to me, the guitar was just, like, a thing I needed to play. I wasn't like, ooh, guitars. So he said, what do you like about guitars? Like, what are you looking for? I said, well, to be honest, I really liked the way your Les Paul sounded but I didn't love the neck. I kind of liked the neck on my, my uh, Squire, you know, Fender kind of neck. And he said, all right, so you're looking for something with like a Fendery neck and, you know, and Les Paul pickups. I said, yeah. And, and he goes, well, you know, maybe you should try those new Eddie Van Halen guitars. It kind of looks like that. And I was really, didn't know anything about Van Halen. I was a huge Beatles nut. And like I said, I liked Eric Clapton. So I hadn't gotten to the eighties yet in my musical development. But anyway, so, I went to a store, which I will not name in this video, and I played one, and I saw the blue one. I'm like, oh my God, that's so gorgeous. I want that blue Van Halen guitar. And I played it, and it was the greatest thing I ever played. The neck felt, it, it had everything I wanted. The neck was kind of rounded and comfortable, kind of like my Rickenbacker was from playing it so much, and you know, it just had that nice round shape. The pickups were hot, like the Les Paul. Uh, it had the, you know, the Fender maple neck. It was just like, wow, this is the perfect guitar for me. And that store wanted to charge list price, which is above street price, because they were so hard to get. Music Man was a much smaller company in the 90s. Uh, so needless to say, we didn't get it from there. We ended up going to another store, my dad's friend's Odebella in New Jersey, and they had one. Now, it was in black. Now, I wanted blue. Uh, this is that guitar. But this guitar played so much better than the previous blue one. I played it. I was like, yeah, this is this is the one. And uh, what actually ended up happening is this is a rarer color than the blue because a lot of people bought the blue ones. I really didn't do any modifications to this. This is still original with the exception of this. Uh, this is a regular Les Paul pickup selector because the other one broke. And I think I stripped the uh, jack plate. So I put like a regular football one in. <laughs> So now I have the Van Halen and I'm in love with it, but I'm terrified to bring it out uh, because it's just, you know, an expensive guitar. Uh, just I don't want to bring it to school. So I kind of need like a full size knock around guitar that I can, you know, bring to school with me every day and not have to worry about banging it around. So in my dad's music store, we were at the time, I think this is the um, like late 90s. I think I was 16, maybe. Uh, 16 or 17 and we were Fernandez dealers and they had these special editions that were like Strat and Telly knockoffs. I think they were Tellys, but I knew we had a few Strats and this one looked like Blackie, uh, the, the Clapton one. I'm really into Clapton. So this is the guitar I kept playing when I'm in the store and I kind of knew I wanted it, but I didn't have a really good excuse to get it. Um, so my guitar teacher, Mike DeCampo, the, in, in, the unbelievable, incredible Mike DeCampo, he has an amazing guitar collection. He just bought this custom shop relic Fender Strat that he paid an unbelievable amount of money for because it was all dinged up already. And I thought that was hilarious. So this was like kind of like a dramatic, stupid prank I pulled. I said, oh, look at me, I can do that too. And I took this guitar on the wall and I started gouging at it, I think with a screwdriver. 
And everybody's like, oh, what are you doing? But I knew I was going to buy it in the back of my head. But I just, it was like, it was really funny at the time. I was a bit of an asshole. Anyway, so I got this guitar and I had this big stupid gouge in it. And I played it and it was like my relic guitar. And I tried to like relic it more. And I, at that point I realized, oh, there's an art to relicking. If you just put like chips on a guitar, you look like a jerk. You know what I mean? So this guitar just looked like crap. And after a while, I got really tired of looking at these awful sort of uh, gouges. So I decided to paint yellow stripes over it, probably because around that time I met Ron Thal. And Ron's one of my favorite musicians on the planet. And I was so taken with him that I wanted to have a striped guitar also like Ron. So I think that's why I did it. Or maybe I just like black and yellow. But I think Ron had something to do with it. So I painted it myself. Uh, a little paint got over in the back. I think this is a really good paint job, actually. I think, you know, it's got texture to it. It's, it's just a nice thing. Uh, I named this lovingly the Disgusto Caster uh, because, yeah. So there are some modifications to this. This was, was sort of like my test guitar for a while that I learned how to do a lot of stuff. There is a um, coil split on here, so you can go from... <laughs> Oh, also, this is tuned to E flat. And this, I believe, I put on recently. This is a Wilkinson bridge. And then you can split that. And then you have the real single coil thing. Okay, right here I have an 80s, I think it's an early 80s, Kramer Pacer Patent Pending. Uh, I saw this one while I was hanging out in my grandparents' music store. I think it was in probably like, you know, 1998 or 99 or something like that. And I noticed this was, it was covered, it was black basically with, with like schmutz and gunk. And I just noticed it had a Floyd Rose like my Van Halen, and also it was blocked like my Van Halen. Now, the cool thing about the Van Halen guitar is that the Floyd Rose doesn't go up in pitch, only down. So when you break a string, it hits the body and everything stays in tune. And I just got used to that. And I saw this guitar had this a similar setup. So I didn't even know anything about it. it the, the strings were rusted, it was disgusting. These guitars were not worth anything at the time. So, you know, he couldn't sell this. It was just sitting in the store forever. I said, wait a minute, if it's a piece of crap, how much do you want for it? He goes, 50 bucks. So it turned out after I cleaned this up that this was like a Van Halen guitar. This is almost like the guitar he plays in the Hot For Teacher video. It's got a really flat neck. I don't know what's original on here. I have things of different colors. You got a random tuner that doesn't match the other ones. But this guitar is personality and I keep this one tuned down a whole step and I have the D tuner on this. <laughs> Guitars is a guitar company, a custom guitar builder, Ray Redness in Connecticut. Uh, Ray's a great guy. And this was actually a prize. Uh, my college had a, uh, an award they were giving out and Ray graciously donated a custom guitar to the recipient of the award and they chose me to get this. And uh, it was really cool. I got to go to Ray's shop and pick out you know, he had like a bunch of bodies there and a bunch of necks and, and he said, you know, okay, you know, pick a, pick whatever body you like, pick whatever neck. And uh, so we built this. This is actually a really cool guitar. It's a chambered telly. Uh, so it's hollow because, you know, I said I wanted something that sustains. I wanted the option to get something kind of thick, you know, like a Les Paul sound, but something also bright like a telly. So it's almost like, I guess, a, a thin line or a deluxe that would be. Uh, and it's got locking Spurs L tuners on it. Uh, th there was a few modifications. Uh, the big modification actually is it's very hard to pick a guitar neck without strings on it. Just like to pick one off a rack and say, ooh, this is the one. So when you feel a neck without strings, you think, oh, this is nice and small, but then you play it, it's way bigger. So I kind of was struggling with the, the, um, the neck profile here. And I went to my Uncle Phil and I said, uh, I have a problem with this neck, I can't play it, it's too fat. 
And he said, okay, bring me a neck you like. So I brought him the Van Halen neck, and in his driveway, he used a contour, uh, radi contour gauge, a radius gauge, I think they call it. It looks like a comb. And he put it in the back of the neck, and he saw what the neck looked like. And then using an orbital sander, he, uh, <laughs> he literally, like, in, in five minutes went rrr, 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 to, the, to this neck as I'm in his driveway going, ha, ah! and he totally nailed the contour. This feels like my Van Halen. And he, he nailed it. It's, it. it feels great. It's got a beautiful bird's eye maple on the back of it. You know, flame maple top. Uh, and I have a DiMarzio. I think this is a fast track tee or a chopper tee. It's a telly pickup. And this is a blues bucker. So let's listen to that. <laughs> is a Burns Brian May Red Special-ish guitar. I say ish because it's not really an exact replica of the Red Special. This is kind of like an affordable version. Instead of having the, uh, you know, custom spring uh, motorcycle handlebar tremolo, you have a regular Strat style tremolo and it's got, it has these whack locky tuners and, you know, it's not, I don't think it's chambered like, like the Red Special, but it looks the part, it sounds great. And this is one that my dad got for me as a gift. Uh, a rep came into his music store trying to open the line, the Burns line, and my dad wasn't really interested in doing that, but he ended up buying the rep's sample, like the sample he would show to the dealers, because my dad was like, I like that guitar, I'll buy that guitar from you. So it was really cool. And then when I was doing Queen songs with my cover band, I was able to bring this guitar out, and it sounded legit, so. <laughs> beauty here is a Squire, I think it's probably early 2000s, Squire Telly made in Indonesia. Uh, <laughs> I wanted a, uh, okay, this is what, this is the story behind this one. When I was a kid, and dad, if you're watching, I'm sorry for bringing this up yet again, but tough. Anyway, when I was a kid, my dad had this pink Telly that I was absolutely in love with, and same story as Les Paul, one day I went down to play it and it was gone. But, you know, my dad's in the music, you know, retail business anyway, so... Such is to be expected. So the thing about that telly is it had this really nice rounded neck. And this guitar came into the store as a trade. Someone traded this in for something else. And I picked up the neck and it really felt kind of similar to that guitar. But the electronics were a mess. This originally had humbuckers on it, I think. No, it had one humbucker here and whatever this a hum single. So I bought this. I replaced the tuners. I put locking tuners on it. And I put a fast track T and a virtual T neck DiMarzio. And this is an unbelievable sounding guitar. Because you can go from, it, it'll handle like gobs of distortion, but you can also get twang out of it, you know? <laughs> I can't play too many of those licks because I have another telly to do and I don't want to run out of them. But anyway, then you put, then you put distortion on. And it doesn't like, it doesn't out, it doesn't get really like weird sounding. So this is a really like a miracle pickup from the Marzio, the uh, Fast Track T I believe it's called. And then um, if you listen to the neck pickup, the, I don't even know if they make this anymore, the virtual neck, but oh man, it's great. It almost sounds like David Gilmore, you know what I mean? This 
is my second Music Man, uh, and you're going to see a theme start to occur here. But uh, this is a Music Man silhouette special, and the story behind this is I joined Blue Oyster Cult on bass, and then a couple of years later, when Alan Lanier retired from the road, I moved over to guitar and keyboards. Now, the guitar I was playing is something I don't have anymore. Uh, is It was an OLP Music Man. I got that to be sort of like a backup for the Van Halen because I was really paranoid about bringing the Van Halen with me. It was like my really nice guitar. And also, since then, Van Halen had moved on from Music Man and the guitar started becoming valuable. So I really didn't want to bring that out. And also, it was just my favorite guitar. So I said, okay, let me get another Music Man and uh, that'll be the guitar I play on the road. And I called them and I said, look, um, the thing about Music Man is that the guitars are sort of made to order, so they take a while to get in. Right, Phil? Mm. So, <laughs> um, so I called them up. I said, what do you have right now? You know, I need a guitar right now. And they said, okay. They, they, they read off a list and they said, we have this blue silhouette special. And I'm thinking, well, that's kind of cool because Alan Lanier played single coil pickups, but it also has a humbucker, so I can kind of get that, like, it's, it's kind of like a utility guitar, and it was in blue, which is the color I really wanted the Van Halen in originally. And, um, you know, it kind of had, I really liked the look of the early Steve Morse guitar, like the, the blue burst one with the black pickguard. So when they said they had this in stock, all the things seemed cool to me. So they sent us in, and I used this guitar on a ton of gigs. This was my main guitar for years. Uh, the neck was always kind of not not right to me. It didn't feel as, as comfortable as the Van Halen, and as it shouldn't, because it's not the same guitar. But um, my cousin Phil and I recently uh, remedied that situation, uh, and he pulled a Phil Sr. by getting out the orbital sander again, and just going at this neck. And now it feels really nice. Uh, other modifications, I believe this is a Cruiser DiMarzio neck pickup. I just thought the original pickup was a little too glassy. Uh, so, you know, great utility guitar. This is like the kind of guitar if you have to bring one guitar with you to like a wedding gig and cover, you know, a dozen different genres, this will do it. Because you can, you have the two, the humbucker. And this, uh, this neck pickup is kind of like in between a humbucker and a single coil. It's like a dark single coil or a bright humbucker. It's pretty cool. So this is what it sounds like. playing the silhouette special on all the Blue Oyster Cult gigs, and I'm thinking, why am I playing the model I don't want to play? You know, I, I, because I got that because it was what they had available, but I, I really want to play an Axis. That's the model I like. So I actually got this used on eBay, and I got this for a ridiculously good price, and I like that the gold kind of faded into a yellow, because I'm a big fan of yellow. This was a cool purchase for me, and I got it, and I was lucky enough that it really played well when I got the neck was phenomenal. And that's kind of like a crapshoot when you buy something used. You don't know what it's going to be like. And the guitar was great. And it became my main Blue Oyster Cult guitar for a few more years. So one day, my tech, Andrew, at the time, he uh, put the guitar down on the stand. And a gust of wind hit the stage, and the guitar did this. Boom! And the neck cracked. Boom! Right here, unplayable. So luckily, Ernie Ball, I sent it back to them. They replaced the neck, and the neck they gave me was just as good, if not better, than the original neck. So, oh uh, yeah, this is a pretty stock, you know, vanilla axis, but this is a great guitar. And now, since I have the other axe, the axes, I keep this one tuned to E-flat. So this is like my E-flat 
you know, if I have to do a, whenever you see a band geek video and you see me playing this, th that's because the song's in E flat and I want to play a good guitar. <laughs> This guitar, I have a stupid reason for buying. Uh, I bought it because, just look at it. <laughs> I mean, seriously. Uh, I like purple. I'm a big fan of purple. And this guitar does purple really well. I'm also a big Steve Morse fan, but that's not why I got this guitar. I just, I looked at it and I was like, I, ha I have to have that. Uh, and I didn't even, I, I bought this, you know, without even playing it. So I ordered this from Music Man. And it came, you know, several months later, built to spec. And it just turned out, I lucked out with this. It's a phenomenal guitar. I mean, this might be one of the best playing guitars I own. So what's different about this guitar is it has a 12-inch radius, where my other guitars usually have 10-inch radiuses. And for some reason, I just get around really well on this guitar. I think this guitar actually makes me play better. And when you can find an instrument like that, you're very lucky. Uh, it also sounds amazing. This is totally stock, except for, oh wait, it's not totally stock. I had uh, Leroy Aiello, great luthier, guitar tech guy. He um, he blocked this off. So there's a piece of wood in here that prevents the trim from floating. And I did that because that's what I'm used to. Also, it allows me to put the detuner on. Now, here's a funny little anecdote about this. I uh, We were doing a gig in France opening for, for uh, with Blue Oyster Cult was opening for Deep Purple. And this was the only guitar I had available at the time. My other guitars were broken or in the shop or whatever. So I brought this with me. And Steve Morse walks into our dressing room and I have this guitar. And I go, well, this is embarrassing. <laughs> and he goes, no, no, it's awesome. That's really cool that you play my guitar. I said, oh, great. And then he looked at the D tuner. He goes, what's that? I said, oh, it's a drop D, you know, D tuner. He goes, how, how do you make that work? I said, well, I had to block the tremolo. He goes, ah. And then he walked out. So any cool points I earned with Steve Morse, I immediately lost. <laughs> It has a lot of different sounds in it. And then of course you can do this. This is something I'm really proud of. Uh, this is a custom, if you will, Music Man Axis in a custom color for me. After playing Music Man, you know, my whole entire like adult life, basically since I'm 16 years old, uh, they were kind enough to do this one-off for me. This is a uh, Slime Burst Axis, and I'll put a link to a video up up top. I think that side maybe, or that's what side is it, Phil? Is it that side? I don't know, okay. Anyway, you'll see a link where I did an in-depth video on this guitar. Um, I can't love this guitar anymore. It's unbelievable. It plays great. Um, no mods. This is totally stock. It's uh, the only thing they, the only mod they installed at the factory for me is they put a tone in, and I changed the capacitor out. Uh, my buddy Rocco Monteroso, who's also another fabulous guitar player and technician, he um, he recommended a different capacitor. The the black and like the bumblebee looking capacitor and I installed that and that seemed to make this a more useful tone knob but it just plays great I, I love the way it looks this top is outrageous um you know thanks again to Music Man for doing this for me this is just a really cool guitar and I've played this on hundreds of gigs this was like my main Blue Oyster Cult guitar for a long time and I still bring it out it's just it's awesome and I love it <laughs> Oh, 
This is an Eastwood, I don't know the model. Does it say the model? No, Eastwood Guitars 12 string. And if you could see, it's heavily inspired by a Gretsch Country Gentleman. Now, for me, this kind of checked off a few boxes. Now, I'm a huge Rickenbacker fan. I love Rickenbacker 12 strings. I own two of them. The only problem was that, um, the two problems. First of all, Rickenbacker 12 strings are beautiful. I hope to get one again in the future, uh, but they're really expensive and I basically kept them on the wall to play them once a year. And it's not like the other Rickenbacker, the John Lennon one, it, it didn't have sentimental value to me, so keeping one just didn't make any sense. So uh, after having two different Rickenbacker 12s, I sold them and I ended up getting this. And this cost, I got this used, I think on Reverb for 400 bucks. And uh, it, the thing I like about it is it has a wider neck than the Rickenbacker, the ones I had at least, and it makes cording easier, where the Rick was kind of narrow and it was a little tricky to play on. Uh, and, you know, it's cheap stock electronics, but if you're a monkey with your rig, you can get a good sound. And here's a Helix preset I made for a recent Band Geek video where I used this for my new mistake, uh, the Jellyfish tune. And it's just, it's a good sounding guitar, and it also, kind of completes my Beatles wall because I have the John Lennon Rick, I got the McCartney bass and this and it looks right, you know what I mean? And it's also useful because it's a 12 string. This is a guitar that's really special to me. This was a gift from Eric Bloom of Blue Oyster Cult. This is a guitar he used for years in the 90s. I think this was his main gigging guitar. It's an ESP Mirage, and this is a freaking shred machine. I mean, it's got the, the floating Floyd actually behaves itself in this guitar, works perfectly. The neck is flat, like you can do some crazy stuff. Like if I was a better guitar player, I would be awesome on this. But uh, you'll have to settle for me playing it. So it's got, you know, the full-size humbucker in the bridge. You have the small humbucker in the neck. It's awesome. <laughs> this time I started really getting into the line six stuff uh, if you guys know if you follow this channel and if you haven't done so already please follow this channel subscribe it's very helpful to me um, I'm really into the line six stuff today all the sounds you're hearing are through the helix and um, line six actually reached out to me and asked me if I wanted to try out a variax and I was like yeah cool because I've actually I had a variax before then I it was sold to me from my friend uh, John Biscuti and uh, cause I kept borrowing it from him all the time. Like every time I wanted to do a, like a Spinal Tap gig, cover gig where I needed a sitar or something that I needed something weird, I kept borrowing it. And then after a while he said, why don't you just buy this from me? So um, I, I'd been using Variaxis for years and then I got not this one. They sent me a Sunburst one and um, I'm not a fan of Sunburst. So I actually traded that uh, with another gentleman named Bill on the uh, Variax forums, uh, Bill Caminos, I hope I'm saying your name right, and uh, he swapped because he preferred the Sunburst and I preferred the, the regular black. Uh, did a couple mods to this. Now, the Variax part, the modeled part is stock, 100%. The only things I changed on this, I changed the original pickups, I put DeMarzio's in here. I... You know what, I'll, I'll, put a, I'll put a thing on the screen of what pickups are in here. And the other mod I made on this guitar is we shaved the neck. The James Tyler Variaxes have baseball bat necks and uh, not a fan. So I believe uh, Rocco Monteroso shaved this neck and uh, did a tremendous job, which is just great. First I'll play the magnetic pickups, the Marzios. Put a little schmutz on. 
Of the magnetics here's some just a quick run through if you want to see more of the variax like in all the sounds in it i did another video i'll put a link up so you can go from like strats you can go to a les paul Uh, you can do your, um, like a jazz box. Yeah, you got a couple of Rickenbackers in here, 12 strings. Uh, you got some funky sounds. And you can also do alternate tuning. So if I want to, you know, do a sitar with a drop D, or I can put the whole guitar down a half step. The way I feel about variaxes, and this is something I talk to guitar players about often, I think that this is very, very exciting technology, and I really think that everybody should have one. Uh, Maybe this is not your main guitar. I can get, I get that. So if you have your favorite Strat you play, this is not going to replace that. This is going to be the other guitar you bring with you to the gig. This is going to be the guitar when someone says, you know, can I do this down a whole step today? My voice doesn't feel right. You pick this up, you transpose the guitar, you're good to go. Or if you need to do a song where you go from like, you know, uh, an acoustic to a Les Paul drop tune to an open tuning Strat for a slide part, you know, like you can do that with this. And other, I just don't know of anything else that does that. And the guitar sounds good. It plays great. The uh, the modeled sounds are, you know, are do they sound 100% like the original thing? No, but they're convincing enough. And th this is just an amazing, you know, miracle of technology. I know I'm really singing the praises of this guitar. This is not an advertisement. This is just how I feel about it. I think uh, guitar players should embrace this technology because this is cool. This is made to help us make our gigs easier. So when I do a Blue Oyster Cult gig, I bring a Variax and I bring my main guitar and I can pretty much do anything with that. So Variax, very cool. So whenever I would go to a NAMM show, I'd always stop by the Music Man booth and I would pick up a Luke guitar and I love this kind of V-shaped neck and I never thought that I'd really connect with it, but there was something like really cool about it. So. I decided one year to pull the trigger on it. I contacted them. I told them what I wanted, and they sent me this gorgeous guitar in this sort of like blue to to white kind of uh, burst, and um, it has a roasted, really pronounced V-neck on it. It has the Marzio pickups in it, the Active Boost. This guitar is just unbelievable, and the the thinking behind this was this. I wanted this to be like a more souped up version of what the silhouette was and that's exactly what this is i mean and also you know added bonus that this is a steve lukather guitar because i love steve lukather and this really does that kind of thing you know got great a great range of sounds here what i like about this is the bridge pickup's not too dark but the single coils are total strat you know 
but not even like a strat, like a super duper, you know, uh, Steve Lukather kind of strat, like all the stuff you hear on those classic records. It's great. <laughs> But it also does the total cheese. This is a Fender 50s road-worn Telecaster. It's made in Mexico. It's a really cool guitar. Um, it's relic, like to say, road-worn. Uh, they put some dings in it, and they actually did a nice job of it, unlike the job I did on the Disgusto Caster. So this is a guitar I played at the NAMM show at the Fender booth, and I picked it up, and I said, oh, there's the neck. There's the neck from the old pink Tele. Oh, by the way, if you uh, have seen a, an 80s Telecaster pink with like uh, EMG pickups in it, and uh, it's got the big block logo. Uh, send me an email. Uh, here's what it looks like. Okay, anyway, so at the NAMM show, I played that guitar, and it felt like my dad's telly that he, that he sold. Uh, so I ordered one. I got it from AMS, American Musical Supply. I used to work there, and I was working at the time, and I got the guitar. It was This guitar is beautiful, but it felt nothing like the one... I played at NAMM. In fact, it had nothing to do with that guitar. So I didn't want to sell it because I kind of liked it. So again, I brought it to Rocco Monteroso. I told him what I wanted this to feel like, and he shaved the neck down, and he did a wonderful job. It's right on the money. It's, it's just as I remember that telly being, uh, and it's just great. I changed a couple other things. This is a DiMarzio. Uh, these are Area T pickups. They're DiMarzio Area Telecaster pickups. They're noiseless, and they sound great. <laughs> You can get your Joe Walsh on all day long. That's the bridge pickup. Really cool. Sounds great. And then we go to the neck pickup, which also sounds beautiful. Now this is a guitar that usually lives on the road with Blue Oyster Cult's gear, and I brought it home just for this video. This is a Line 6 Variac Standard. Now, uh, you might be asking, why do you have two Variaxes? That seems, uh, that seems extravagant. Uh, the reason is, I brought a Variax out for a Blue Oyster Cult gig. We do a couple of tunes that require acoustic guitars and uh, some, you know, drop tunings and some weird stuff. So. I brought this out, and the guys loved it. They loved the fact that we could bring certain studio textures on the stage with this guitar. And, you know, our front of house guy, Woody, loves the way it sounds. Eric and, and Buck love the way it sounds. So this was a win. So this became like something that had to live on the road. So uh, this is a Variac Standard, which is essentially uh, a Yamaha Pacifica, which is a good guitar. It's an inexpensive, well-made gu guitar, but it has Variax guts, all the uh, electronics you would need. And uh, I first played this at the NAMM show when they released it, and I picked it up, and the neck was really nice, and it was a lot uh, more what I'm used to than the, the JTV. The JTV had a chunky neck that needed to be shaved. Uh, I think all I did to this neck was sand off the finish, because there was like a, uh, a satin finish on here or like a light gloss, and I basically brought it down to the wood and put a coat of oil on it. Um, so it's a little, little easier to play, for me at least. Uh, other um, things I did, now now the Variax, is, the Variax standards come in like purple and, and green and all these cool colors. Uh, this one was pretty plain looking, and it was black with white pickups, and I wanted it to look a little nicer, uh, which was the main inspiration behind changing the pickups, but also... When I knew this was going to become my Blue Oyster Cult 
second road guitar, uh, the first being either the um, the Axis uh, or the uh, the Federa Imperial, I knew that I needed a bridge pickup that could sort of compete with that. So if I broke a string or I needed to actually use this as a backup, I needed something that was sort of in the ballpark. So here I put a DiMarzio Tone Zone S, and I also wanted a little bit of a different thing uh, in these two pickups. So if I want like a stratty kind of sound as an alternative to the uh, the dual humbucker sound, I put two Area 61 DiMarzio pickups in here. So you have your tone zone here where you can get your humbucker tones and you have your stratty pickups here. And they're all noise canceling, you know, humphrey. They sound great. Of course, I got them with the chrome pickup covers, which makes this guitar really pop. And then the last modification I did, which was the silliest one, and I, I felt silly doing it, but I'm so glad I did, is I replaced the tremolo arm uh, with one that has a chrome tip, just to give, give this guitar like a black and chrome look. I mean, how cool is that? Uh, and if you're interested in doing this to your Variac standard, uh, this is a WD, I wrote it down here, uh, Vintage Replacement Tremolo Arm, and this is the uh, WD Tremolo Arm Tip uh, Chrome Plastic. You can get that from WD, uh, WDmusic.com. Uh, and... Another thing that people ask me all the time is, how did you replace the magnetic pickups? Okay, number one, you will avoid the warranty by doing that. Okay, uh, number two, what I did was I basically took this off. The I was very careful. I took this off a little bit, and I basically just uh, snipped the existing pickup wires and soldered these onto what was already there. Okay, so that's how I did that. Oh, and another thing, when you get this, it'll wobble. Um, even the stock one wobbles, uh, put a little bit of Teflon tape around the threads and that takes care of that. So yeah, very act standard. I use this on every gig and it's, it's a really cool guitar. Uh, I'm not going to go through the very pickups. If you want to hear those, I'll put a link in the description to what the very pickups sound like. I'm just going to show you the mags really quick. <laughs> Telly and loving it, I decided to take a chance on the other road worn guitars in the series. And this is a 50s road worn strat, also made in Mexico. Uh, this one has a little bit more heavy relicking on it, and it's really cool. This one I actually bought without playing. I bought it off of uh off of reverb, and the guy was very descriptive about what the neck felt like, and he was right on the money with how he described it. This actually feels pretty similar to the Luke guitar. It's a pronounced V. It's a really comfortable neck. And also it just gives you that whole, you know, Clapton blacky thing. It looks like blacky. And that's kind of what I like about it. It's, I'm a big Clapton fan. Um, I changed the pickups on this. The neck I left as is, no shaving there. Uh, the pickups are Area 61s in the uh, neck and bridge. And I have a virtual solo. This is actually one of the best guitars I own. And a little bit of trivia. Uh, Buck Dharma actually played this on the new Blue Oyster Cult record. So, uh, this is what it sounds like. <laughs> Also does this. That 
that's the thing I love about the uh, virtual solo pickup. It doesn't get harsh sounding. If you've played a, a Strat before and you try to put any kind of gain on that pickup, it gets a little like, eh. This is kind of smooth. <laughs> So after having the Telecaster, Fender Telecaster, and a Fender Stratocaster, what's the next thing you got to get? A Gibson Les Paul, and that completes the holy trinity of classic electric guitars. So I got this one, and I was actually able to get this for pretty cheap. It's a, it's a Gibson 2018 Les Paul Tribute, uh, which is kind of like, sits right above the Les Paul Studio in the price range. So I was able to get this for a, for a good price. Uh, what I like about this guitar is I like the color. It kind of reminds me of the uh, Eric Clapton Beano guitar a little bit, the Bluesbreaker one, which is my favorite era of Eric Clapton. And, uh, and I really wanted this to do that. And uh, also, it's it has a it's like a unfinished or oil or satin finish or something like that. And you know, I'm not a big fan of heavy gloss, so that was really cool to me and really appealing. Uh, one of the first things I did was take out the stock pickups. My dad has a, uh, a 336 guitar that he put these Gibson MHS Memphis Historic Spec pickups in. Um, he, it's a long story, but he 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 stumbled on those guitar on those pickups and. He really likes them. So I managed to find a set of those Gibson MHS pickups on Reverb, and I put them in, and they're great. It's a, like a low output, classic Les Paul thing. The other main, major, major thing we did here, and it really took some balls for us to do this, uh, and I really can't take credit for this, my cousin Phil, who's behind the camera right now, uh, he's my buddy, and this guitar is called Buddy. I put Buddy on the uh, truss rod cover because it's, it's the guitar from you, Buddy. So anyway... Um, what he, I told him, I love everything about this guitar, but the neck was almost like a rectangle. Is that right? It like it had these like really pronounced shoulders, uh, where it was almost like like there was a good neck in here, but it had this extra wood on the side. So I told him like I don't want to make the neck slimmer this way. The neck still as thick as it was when we got it. We might have just taken off a layer of finish just to make it look uniform. Uh, all he did was take off the shoulders of the neck and we made him like a steep angle to give it a little more of a C shape instead of like a hard, uh, like a, almost like a bracket shape, which is what it was. It was really weird. So he, he got out the orbital sander and he took off the, the edges of it. And then we took the, uh, the raw guitar to Home Depot and we went to the Minwax aisle and we found that cherry Minwax is pretty much the same finish as what they use on Les Pauls. So we uh, put a couple of, maybe like eight coats of Minwax on here. And we it, we got it matching pretty well. It's, you know, if you, you can tell if you really look, but it's pretty damn close. And this guitar is now amazing. I love it. Uh, I always wanted a Les Paul. And since I couldn't find the one I wanted for under four grand, we made one. Uh, and it didn't cost us that much money. It just cost us time and aggravation. That's this pickup. So if you put like gobs of distortion on here, you can actually get that kind of almost slash sound. And of course the bridge pickup sounds awesome. This is something I've been wanting to do for a long time. It was like a, a project guitar that I was just dreaming about. Now, there was a long period where I was doing a lot of Queen stuff. After I did the Bohemian Rhapsody video, I got calls to do Queen gigs. 
and I had to keep bringing the uh, the Burns Red Special with me. And that guitar was just a nightmare because it wouldn't stay in tune. It was hard to play. The strings would fall off the neck. It just had so many things wrong with it, but it looked great and it sounded great. So one thing I always thought in the back of my head was, wouldn't it be cool if I can get a Brian May guitar, but in a guitar like that sound and kind of the look, but in a guitar I actually enjoyed playing. So I was scouring the internet for a long time to get this guitar, which is a uh, an Axis Sport in red. I wanted to make it a red special. So I looked for years and people weren't getting rid of them. And then just, I think last year, I found one on Reverb and the guy was willing to let it go for a, a good price. And I got it and it was an unbelievable guitar. This is a fantastic neck. This might, this might be the best Axis I have. So of course I proceeded to ruin it. And I have a whole video documenting the ruination of this guitar. Uh, I'll put a link up. But um, the guitar was great as is. But my uncle Phil and my cousin Phil and my buddy Mark Rucci, we all worked on this together. And uh, this has DiMarzio's Brian May pickups, which are hard to find because I was able to get some. Thank you, DiMarzio. Uh, and I we did a uh, DiMarzio super switch here uh, with like our own custom routing. So I have the classic Brian May sounds right here uh, without having to do all the crazy switching. So um, if I ever play another Queen, you know, symphony gig or something like that, I'll probably end up using this guitar because it's awesome and it sounds great. <laughs> Last, but certainly not least, is my custom Federa Imperial. This is a guitar that has a lot of me in it. Uh, Vinny Federa and Joey Lorisella were kind enough to reach out to me and, and ask me about making guitar together uh, and having me play one of their custom guitars. Now this is a truly custom experience. These are great guys. Uh, this is something that took us maybe a little over a year to make, and it's an Imperial model but not really. Uh, their Imperial model is a little bigger, and I told them, I said, guys, I'm, I'm only 5'7". I need something that's a little smaller that I can get around on, and I need a small neck. And what they did was, the original intention was to clone the neck on my Van Halen for this, but they made, they didn't clone it, they made a better neck. This neck feels unfrickin' believable. It, any any sort of weirdness that I ever felt with the Van Halen is gone. It's just an incredibly easy guitar to play. It has this joint here, this neck joint, which you can get way up and not have any sort of fatigue, which is hard to do on a lot of guitars. Uh, it's very interesting here. We have, it's hard rock maple on the back of the neck, so it keeps it straight. We have bird's eye maple on the front of the neck. This is a very high grade of a, of a uh, maple quilt on the top, and they did my, uh, my slime burst color here, which is really cool, uh, which is something they, they've never done before. And on the back, we have butternut, which is a very strange wood, and we took a chance on it, and it ended up working out really well. The guitar is really not that heavy. Um, I think it's eight pounds, maybe. Uh, and another cool feature here is we have the Floyd Rose rail tail, which I really like. And over here, we have hip shot open gear tuners. Very cool, steampunk looking. So let's take a closer look at what's in this guitar. In the bridge, I have a DiMarzio tone zone, and in the neck, I have an Air Norton. So this is like the Van Halen kind of inspired uh, configuration. And this is a very similar uh, switching configuration to the Axis Sport, which I actually don't have anymore ever since I changed it to the Brian May thing. So it's great to have that again. There's the bridge. And then you have this cool, like, in-between sound here. Both. Then you have the 
this position here, which is, a, I think it's just parallel. <laughs> It's not like a thin, out of phasey sound, it's really useful. If you put on some distortion here, you can get the uh... Which is great. And then of course you have the neck pickup. But it also does the thing you want it to do. So here you go, my custom Federa Imperial. I hope you enjoyed this video today. This was a lot of fun to do. I want to thank my cousin Phil for helping me. This was a, a few hours doing this, getting these guitars out, tuning them up, and, and making them look good, and, and doing all this stuff. So thank you, Phil. And thanks for watching. If you liked this video, please like and subscribe. And let me know if you want me to do one with my bass guitars, because I'd be happy to do that. And this was a lot of fun. And I'll see you guys next time.